now we need to, we probably want to uh, read the color information. And for example, let's say in the future, you have the road in red color. So you don't want to do something in the red area. And maybe you want to have certain rotation, you want to build uh, uh, like circular houses in green area and more taller towers in red area, something like that. You can. How do you differentiate by reading this uh, color information? Uh, this is uh, a, a quite handy uh, thing to do. So how do you read the color information? So inside here, after you create this point, <clears throat> we can use something called renderer. Rend transform get component renderer I know it may sound a bit weird but this renderer meaning uh, in so whatever it has this, this mesh render, that is render. So it's gonna create a renderer and like sort the naming. And we need this thing called texture 2D. So for example, for all of these, uh, I figure it out by looking at a lot of different forums and examples. So for example, if you really want to know oh, how Raycast it actually works, I don't really know too much of every single thing, but for example, uh, how to, for example, how to read uh, texture color unity. And then I just go through a lot of different forums and examples and kind of create your own uh, solution. So that's how I did it. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to just uh, share uh, something that works for me. So rend.material.main texture as texture 2D. There are a few lines here. Um, so let's just copy paste. I, I always just use these lines, copy paste it. So once it's useful, I don't really need to know exactly. So it's called texture coordinate. Heat has texture coordinate, seems like. And we can use the pixel UV X position and width. So the reason uh, translating this is to really understand translating the actual texture size in the scene. Pixel UV Y <coughs> times texture height. So we can actually get the color information. We can call it color. And that is texture get pixel from a integer of x integer So that was the color information I can get. <coughs> so uh, how do I actually also use the color information from this uh, thing? So what we can use is called something called out. Uh, my color, for example. And then say color my color out. 
Oh, color. And then my color is becoming this color information. And we return. Why is this? Hey, hey Sonia. Mm -hmm. uh, when you add the out color, my color, is that like, you mean like you're returning out of that function a color or what does that mean? Yeah, so basically I'm trying to um, I'm trying to pass this my color information outside so I can actually use it here. Okay. Okay, else. Okay. Color is color white. Okay, now there's no error. So if I don't have anything returning, I give a white color or black. Okay, so uh, in this case, so I can actually use my color to do something here because otherwise if you don't do this out, it doesn't, you cannot use that value even if you calculate it here. Okay, so, okay, so, uh, for now, let's change the actual color of the house with following the current color. So what we can do is get component. Mesh renderer. Material color. Use my color to color. So actually what we just did is we added few lines here <clears throat> just to calculate the color from the heat point and exporting that so you can actually use it and using that to color my geometry. So my original geometry was white, if you remember. Now they're actually following the color from the terrain. All right. So what if I change now this terrain uh, image to something else? Let's try. I'm going to use a, let's say, a colorful map that we made for this one maybe. And then I put it here. And instead of this one, I'm going to change my material to use this color. Let's say. And let's see what happens. Oh, see? We didn't let the read and write enable. So read and write enable, apply. So now it's actually reading the colors. All right. So how will this be very in, uh, useful? Actually, this is quite useful. Uh, what we can do is we can actually use this color information to trigger something or make some changes. So for example, um, I'm not going to just change their color. I'm going to use the value to do something. So what do we want to do? So for example, uh, I can extract their red value, for example. So I'm going to use a plot. RGB, let's say, red value. value is color, my color dot R. 
is my red value. I can use G green value, my color G value, my color D. Okay. And let's say, okay, I can use these to do some changes to my current house. Uh, let's say current house transform. I'm going to rotate this according to my red value. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0 F red value times something like 6, 0, 0 0.0 F. And we can also use current house transform local scale. And we can change the scale of maybe let's say y according to uh, the green value. Green value times 12. 0 0.0 f, 4.4 um, f, 4.0 our original size, uh, local scale. Oh, local scale needs to be done like this. New vector three. The local because local scale is a value. Rotate is a rotation. Uh, operation. So we use scale. Um, yeah, let's just visualize it. So we didn't use blue value though. We can maybe use blue value to do something else. Okay. So you can see that the yeah the green value is zero on these values that's why they almost became zero so I'm going to um, I'm going to scale this four plus green value times fifty for all the other area we will have at least four height and there's only rotation in red value area okay. the green area has a tower now and when the green value is higher they are taller and when they become more darker they will become shorter and the rotation is applied only in red area. Okay. And if we do this in a, in this kind of input, maybe they will give us some interesting result. Check. Uh, they're not that different so we are going to because now the values are more mixed up here and there so we're going to boost the number here and we're going to also use the blue value to determine the z direction times blue value plus three times Now you have a little bit more interesting result. And if this is more kind of, if your input is more determined, you will have more interesting cityscape. 
So we can also turn this one on. So they are also grabbing the material color. So you will see that whenever they have like higher green value, they are taller, and the red, more red value, they are rotating. So that's the first step of this exercise. How do you feel like so far? Uh, not bad. Uh, so I, mean, I have a question. Uh, can you go down uh, like where your L statement is? Uh, for the because I keep getting an error, but I'm not sure why. Which statement? The where it says like the if if uh, rate cast. Yeah. And then yeah. Okay, so how do we fix that kind of centroid based scale? Yeah. So it's mirrored below, right? So how do we fix that? It's actually better that we fix it in the um, in the uh, prefab. So this one we are using simple cube house prefab, right? So we are going to go to the prefab, simple cube house prefab. And the reason is that because it is actually centered, all right? But if we just move it, it actually changed the position of the parent. So this is not, not good. Actually, in order to change the position, we need to create a cube as a child and center it wherever. So it doesn't determine, doesn't get determined from the parents. So I'm going to follow this 464 as its original. Or, uh, actually, it, it rewrote the scale, so we will have to change it. So, anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete, remove component, remove component, remove component from the parent and leave this one here. So, the parent should. It's zero, zero, zero out, and my cube will go up by half, 0 0.5. But now, uh, the it's not going to, it's going to do everything correct in, instead of the mesh renderer, because now mesh renderer is under its child. So I will show you how it can fix that as well. So if you change this one now, this has an error because of the mesh renderer. So I will show you how to fix that. So if we turn this one off, the reason is now the current house doesn't have mesh renderer because we deleted it. That's why it's erroring. Okay, now uh, everything works. It's not mirroring, right? But the mesh render is no longer writing the color. So what it has to do is I have to get the component from its child. So that's the difference. So uh, let me see. Okay, so what it does, what we need is get transform dot get child the first one dot and do everything else because now the the cube became its chi child Hold on. Now it's working properly. So do you see the difference? Hey, hey so, me, uh, mm -hmm. so what, what is the, the reason to have like the child versus like, if you just have this, the cube by itself? Like, is because, there a... because I wanted to make sure in my prefab, Mm -hmm. My geometry is on above zero zero. Okay. Yeah. 
So this one is now, you, you can put it anywhere according to the parent sales position. So the reason is to have the parent of this prefab to be zeroed out. Because the script will position it according to the 0, 0 of the parent and scale it relative to that 0, 0, 0 position. That's why before it was scaling on both sides. Does it oh, make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so and, tell me. No, no, and um, so I don't know if I missed a step, but I don't have, like I just have, like for example, just like a single object instead of like having the child. Uh, so I, I wasn't sure if like I missed a step or like you just take like the, the to say you have the simple cube house and you just create like a new object within that. Or how did you get like the child? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Can you repeat that question? Sorry. So, so like, for example, when I go to click on my uh, simple cube house object, like to edit it, um, I don't have the child underneath it is just like one object like it just says simple cube house and it's just it's just like a single object yeah so i don't have the cube underneath it you i made it i right click and made it oh okay yeah and i make sure that the the parent scale is one 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 and the child scale is also one 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 why because we are making the scale here in the script that's why if you make this scale for example two to two it will become eight oh, okay. and times times two of all these values does that make sense yeah yeah i get it. okay yeah. okay any questions so far All right, so that was creating pixelated. Uh, that is about reading the terrain pixel information, which I I felt it was really really important thing to figure out. I don't know what do you feel like, because it's really really useful if you think about what you can do with it. Like you can create a lot of different uh, map and do something about it. Okay, so I want to uh, hey, make, hi. <laughs> Sorry to bother you again. Um, I, so for example, I still like to say like the, the simple cube house and now I have the cube underneath, right? Uh, but I have like an object that's under, uh, let's say it's when I click on simple cube house, it, it, there's another object there. Like did I, do I have to delete that one and just keep the cube? Or I forget how you did that. Um, so, for example. Yeah. So if you if you have two objects here. No, so like I have I have the cube and then I have the simple cube house, right? But when I click on the simple cube house, I have another object that's like tied to it. Yeah. So just delete everything there. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can just say right click, say remove component. Okay, good. Gotcha. Yeah, just to clean it up. Yeah. Um, so this way you can also change the geometry to something. Sorry that I'm using always the same thing. So if I change this one and make this one to the first object and and now if i play this it's going to give me these houses 